चेक कर लो ओके ओके माय डियर फ्रेंड्स टुडे वी विल बी डूइंग अ रिवीजन लेक्चर ऑफ ऑक्यूपेशनल हेल्थ आई गिव द इंट्रोडक्शन एज वेल एज द प्रिवेंशन वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट लेक्चर बिकॉज एवरी टाइम वी हैव one short note which comes on occupational health and if you know this particular uh, lecture if you know this read up prevention of occupational health you will be able to answer all the questions mostly so you must ensure that the guidelines which i give you regarding prevention of occupational disease are mentioned in that particular manner and then you'll be able to answer the question very easily so let's just run through introduction and then we will go through the um, prevention in a little bit more detail let's see so basically a definition of occupational and occupational health should, uh, by the ILO basically said that occupational health should aim at promotion and maintenance of the highest degree of physical mental and social well being of all workers in all occupations prevention among workers of departures from health caused by their working condition so basically what we are talking about is not normal uh, health problems but anything which is due to their working environment anything which is due to their working environment so there is another definition which is given <clears throat> and basically what we are looking at is the adaptation of the work to man of each man to his job that is basically what we call ergonomics if we really look at protection of the workers health that is our basis for all um, occupational health problems so when we are considering occupational health we must look at the envi occupational environment what are the occupational hazards what are the occupational diseases and the prevention okay so when we talk about the occupational environment what we look at is man and his interactions whether physical chemical and biological agents which are there and man and the machine and man and man so there can be problems with all these three environments which are man and the various agents which he is dealing with man with a machine which is dealing with or a person to person interaction which results in lots of so, so, so many psychological problems so let's look at what are the uh, hazards which are possible the hazards which are there can be defined in terms of physical chemical biological mechanical or psychosocial the physical problems it can be either very hot or very cold or humid or air movements heat radiation can be there there can be light noise vibrations ultraviolet light and ionizing radiation so all these different types of physical environments the person can come in his occupational um, when he is in an occupation <clears throat> i will not go into details of each one of them because um, that will take a whole class chemical hazards basically when you are in uh, occupational setting either it can be a local action or it can be inhalation of these compounds which are there either dust gases metals or you can ingest those things um, so we have to see how things biological environment also any person who is dealing with various especially lab workers etc or in the environments which have got other uh, infectious agents around it can be infective or parasitic agents which are involved or animal and animal products while well, butchery or various other handling uh, meat products etc you got animal products veterinarians who deal with lots of uh, uh, the dogs and various other animals or agriculture workers who are work in the soil or who have got um, work, working with fertilizers leather wool industry abattoirs butchers so the all sorts of uh, biological hazards are possible <clears throat> then we look at uh, man and machine that is 
power driven machines which are there which can result in various problems of uh, types protruding or moving parts poor installation the safety measures are lacking or if the person is in an uncomfortable position or unphysiological posture for doing his job that results in problems mechanical hazards like accidents involving moving parts or protruding parts heavy machinery construction industry or malfunctioning of lifts and cranes all these things can cause occupational or mechanical hazards <clears throat> what about man to man as i said basically you can have a lot of problems psychosocial factors which are involved stress in in the office place type and rhythm of work person who is supposed to work at night like like in the in cases of various industries where you are handling uh, uh, where your person is being asked to work at the timings of people who are there in the us or uh, uk <clears throat> all this online work which is there the rhythm of uh, the circadian rhythm may be may may go for a six work stability and service condition if the person is not stable is tense job satisfaction and leadership style is all these affect physical security and job security the person is not secure covid time so many people have lost their jobs workers participation and communication but does he communicate with his seniors do, do the workers participation participate in management system of payment and welfare incentives a lot of been during the covid time so many people have not got paid they have uh, either got 50% of their pay or, so, or less and welfare incentives which are there have to be looked into so the psychosocial hazards can be like when once the psychological and behavioral problems you can get hostility aggressiveness anxiety depression alcoholism drug abuse sickness absenteeism and psychosomatic problems like fatigue headache pain in the neck shoulder peptic ulcer hypertension ihd rapid aging all these things can occur so the diseases which are there occupational diseases can be due to various reasons physical agents can cause problems or chemical agents or biological agents can cause disease or you can have due to all these three things you can possibly land up in occupational uh, cancers or due to a local problem you can have an occupational dermatosis and due to psychosocial problems you can have uh, diseases of psychological nature so what are all these diseases we have just labeled some of them in heat you can have heat hyperparesia exhaustion heat cramps etc cold trench foot frostbite light you have occupational cataract or minor nystagmus due to pressure you have caisson's disease that is person when a person is going under water caisson's disease air embolism blasts explosions noise you can get occupational deafness In radiation, you can get cancer, leukemia, aplastic anemia, pancytopenia. Then you can have mechanical factors resulting in accidental injuries or electricity resulting in electrocution and burns. And various dusts can cause pneumoconiosis. This comes. This is a very very common question. Pneumoconiosis. So two, we can we should look at different types of dust. One is inorganic dust and organic dust. inorganic dust like coal resulting in anthracosis silica resulting in silicosis asbestos resulting in asbestosis or lung cancer and iron resulting in cirrhosis there are a few of them organic dust like cane fiber resulting in bagasosis cotton dust resulting in bacidosis tobacco resulting in tobaccosis and hay or grain dust resulting in farmers lung and chemical agents you can have gases carbon dioxide carbon monoxide or um, various other ammonia nitrogen hydrogen sulfide any of the gases gas poisoning can result metal you can have various metals causing various types of problem lead mercury cadmium manganese beryllium arsenic chromium or chemicals like acids alkalis or pesticides and solvents like carbon disulfide benzene trichloroethylene chloroform these are all the problems which can occur 
uh, let's just give you a glimpse of uh, various what what various uh, things can cause lead can cause anemia hypertension nephritis peptic ulcer dyes can result in asthma skin bladder and kidney diseases precancerous conditions solvents can result in liver and kidney damage dermatitis alcoholism silica can result in uh, can aggravate a tuberculosis lesion which is there or and cause chronic lung disease radium or x-rays they can cause blood diseases and you got various biological agents which can cause uh, problems like brucellosis leptospirosis anthrax actinomycosis hydatosis psittacosis tetanus encephalitis fungal infections all these can be caused in because of occupational diseases cancers you can have cancers of skin lungs or dermatitis occupational dermatitis eczema or psychological origin you got industrial neurosis hypertension peptic ulcer <clears throat> now the very important portion of our lecture that was also very important this is another important portion that which deals with prevention of occupational hazards and please remember whenever you want to deal with these things try and do it either in primary uh, prevention prim uh, secondary prevention tertiary prevention or deal it uh, better is to deal it in this in occupational hazards deal it in this panel medical measures engineering measures legislative measures the medical measures which are there is uh, one is very important is ergonomics that is fitting a person to his job or fitting a job to the person so you design the machines tools equipment everything layout of the workplace etc everything should be done for improvement of the work, workplace for the person and so that he can adjust well to his so um, what you can do is pre-placement examination pre-placement examination is before the person comes out of the job you look whether he is fit for that particular job place the right man in the right job so for that you do a medical examination work uh, medical or family or occupational history is taken is physical examination biological examination and radiological examination is carried out what is now the hazard or un undesirable conditions are listed over there you have you, we have already discussed that earlier also now periodic examinations after pre placement examination you can do a periodic examination you know how his status what he was before he joined the um, occupational setting so depending on the job <coughs> you'll want to do an examination once a year or maybe even more frequently when the person is in very hazardous condition give an example in case of radiologist we would like his uh, how much dose he's got with uh, of x-rays we got a tld badge which he, which he carries so that can be checked so his um, blood test we will want to do at least once in six months okay um, in occupational settings you will want to do so if a person has got problem you should send him on medical leave also you should give him enough medical and health care facilities medical care for workers and family first aid services immunization all these things should be available another is that you must ensure that you notify the concerned authorities so that if the, if the number of cases are increasing in a particular industry the government also comes into play and he and ensures that we do not um, the number of uh, cases do not rise and prevent preventive action is taken so, it is, uh, when acts are there <coughs> factories mines and dock uh, regulations etc all these are now being amalgamated into one act which is going to be passed by parliament Supervision of the working environment is very important. You must ensure that regular rounds are taken by an occupational health specialist who will see whether um, that all measures are taken for prevention of occupational diseases, whether it be raw materials or physiology or occupational physiology or various other areas where you can have safety engineers or industrial hygienists and psychologists who look into these areas. Um, very important that we keep a good record maintenance and analysis of records is very very important so that we have patients and um, also the the patient should know 
what is the problems he's likely to face so health education and counseling is very very important he must ensure that he knows how to put on his protective gear he also should know if if a, what are the problems likely in this industry so he should report whenever early signs of the problem are more of important very very important is engineering measures first thing is regarding the design of the whole factory the blueprint what the type of walls what the floor what is the height what is the roof doors windows cubic space everything the whole thing requires to be properly designed second is good housekeeping that means ensure that all items are kept in the correct place and no dust and various other problems are there that that can be done by white washing once a year by vacuum cleaning wet cleaning and maintenance of the protective equipment then all dust etc the best thing to 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 get to get rid of them is to ensure that you've got good ventilation good amount of exhaust which are there keep your windows and doors open so ventilating is very very important and efficient exhaust ventilation is also very very important <clears throat> mechanization as far as possible and ensure that the person doesn't come in contact with hazardous stuff so wherever possible wherever, wherever there is likely of dermatitis or dust or etc you should ensure that you get the machine to do it rather than get the person to do it okay in places where you can substitute the particular substance you can ensure that you substitute that substance so earlier we used to have what is called fossy jaw which used to occur whenever we used matches match matches were made out with white phosphorus so you could uh, just scrape any surface and it would to light up and that the manufacture of that resulted in Uh, phosphorus being absorbed resulting in fossy jaw so we can we have now replaced that with uh, phosphorus sesky sulfide which is which is not doesn't get absorbed so much lead paints again due to iron uh, the uh, lead paints which are they produce a nice glossy paint surface but this can be done even with zinc or iron paints or mercury which is there can result in various problems in the human body it can be replaced with silver salts or benzene which can be replaced with acetone does particles fly in the air when they are small but when they are laden with with uh, with uh, humidity with uh, with moisture they settle down so the best way is to spray water wherever there is dust so wet drilling of the rock or whenever you are grinding sieving or mixing you must ensure that humidity is high and the dust will settle down <clears throat> enclosure wherever there is a there is a contamination enclose that process enclose that process so that and put an exhaust enclose the process and put an exhaust so that that that, that particular process um, humans don't come in contact with it and the exhaust takes away the dust etc isolation so if a particular process is very hazardous and there's too much of the thing which is there you can do it with totally isolating that and workers need not go into that area so you can do it remotely <clears throat> then you can have a, a body clothing for protection against heat you can have gum boots safety shoes goggles gloves aprons barrier creams screens all but all is a useful one till the time you must ensure that this is correctly used environmental monitoring is also very important you must have periodic environmental surveys thermal and environment is also important and you must ensure that enough ventilation and lighting takes place <clears throat> after all this you must ensure that statistics are correctly com compiled and sent to the concerned authorities one is statistics for your own factory so you are able to monitor it and then inform the management also statistical monitoring for the for the government so that they are aware as to what's the problems in your industry 
and research is to be done on all this uh, offer um, industrial I mean you can put some recommendations based on what you're seeing and you must warn people regarding permissible exposure, exposure limits occupational cancers accident prevention industrial fatigue and vocational psychology the legislation which India has is the Factories Act 1948 Workman's Compensation Act the EPF that is the Employees Provident Fund Maternity Benefit Act and the ESI Act, the Employee State Insurance Act, which is with all workers who are there. So this is um, all these things. I'm not going into detail. You'll have to read up in detail because it'll come a lot of material on it, and you'll have to read up in detail. We will talk about it in detail sometime if there is time. Otherwise, please read up each one of these. So thank you, and have a good day, and ensure that you. Keep reading because the moment you come back, we are going to have your um, screening exam. So, most likely, I think uh, by the second or third week of January, we are, we are expecting you all back. You will have your screening exam, and we will we'll have to ensure that the screening exam is held very tightly because um, you have stayed nine months at home, more than nine months, ten months at home. And if you stay 10 months at home, we have to ensure that you learned something because whenever we see your uh, you on the screen, we, we can't see you, but you can see me. But any time you, you all just visit the site for the YouTube site just for five minutes to mark the attendance and go off. So ultimately, if we do not know what you are gaining, we will come to know once you come for your screening exam. Okay, all the best and have a good day.